This will be for the con assignment zeros of polynomials with factoring. Okay, so recall that the zeros of a polynomial are the x-intercepts. So those are the points where the graph crosses or intercepts the x-axis. Okay, and the reason that they're called the zeros if you take the graph of the x-axis that's the same as the line y equals zero okay so that's why they're called the zeros because this is the graph of y equals zero the x-axis so the way to start this equation here is to set it equal to zero okay this is basically in y equals form. Okay, so by setting this equal to zero, it's the same as setting y equal to zero. Okay, and remember that anything multiplied by zero equals zero. So if this equals zero, the whole thing's going to equal zero. If this part equals zero, the whole thing is going to equal zero. So we want to set these equal to zero individually. Let's take the easier one first. Okay, x minus 3 equals zero. Okay, and of course in that case, x equals 3, because 3 minus 3 equals zero. Okay, so that's one of the answers. Now, for this part right here, we're going to have to factor, okay? And I'm going to use factoring by grouping. So, we have 2x squared plus 7x plus 5 equals 0. And this equation here is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so remember with factoring by grouping, you want to find two numbers that multiply to a times c and add to b. Okay, so in this case a times c is going to equal 2 times 5, which of course is just 10, okay? So you want to write out the factors for 10 and stop when you find a pair that adds to 7, okay? And in this case, it's easy because we already have it. We did 2 times 5 in the beginning, okay? And those two numbers add to 7, okay? So we're going to use 2 and 5 to replace the 7. All right. So rewriting this here, we have 2x squared. And instead of 7 or 7x, we're going to use 2x and 5x. Okay, so the 7x became 2x and 5x, and we still have plus 5, and that equals 0. Okay, now if you remember factoring by grouping, we want to group the first two and the last two. Like so. Okay, and then we want to factor each one of these individually. Okay. So both of these are divisible by 2, and both of these are divisible by x. Okay, remember you choose the one with the smaller exponent. This is x squared, this is x to the first. So you just pull out x to the first. 2x squared divided by 2x is just x, and positive 2x divided by 2x is positive 1. Okay, if you want to double check, 
2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times positive 1 is 2x. All right, over here, 5x plus 5. Both of these are divisible by 5. Okay, so I'm going to factor out a 5. 5x divided by 5 is just x. And positive 5 divided by positive 5 is just 1. And that equals 0. Okay. Now both the 2x and the positive 5 are multiplied by x plus 1. So we're going to have 2x plus 5 times x plus 1 equals 0. All right, and just like we said in the first case, anything multiplied by zero equals zero. Okay, so this can be zero or this can be zero. All right, so we're going to do those two separately. The first one's easy. If x plus one equals zero, we know that x would have to be negative one. Right, because negative one plus one is zero. All right, and in the second case, I'm going to do 2x plus 5 equals 0. Let me make more room. Okay, so if I do 2x plus 5 equals 0, subtracting 5 from both sides, the 5s cancel, and 2x equals negative 5. And dividing both sides by 2, x equals negative 5 halves, or you can say negative 2.5. Okay? So we have three zeros right here that we need to graph. Okay? And that part's the easy part. All right, we have x equals 3. Remember, the zeros are, are the ones that cross where it crosses the x-axis. So x equals 3, x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 2 and a half. Here's negative 2, here's negative 3, this is negative 2 and a half. All right, so remember in all these problems, the first step is to set this equal to zero. Okay, and once you do that, that means this part can be zero or this part can be zero. So you want to do those two individually. Okay, let's start with this part here, x squared plus 4x plus 3. Equals zero. Okay, and we want to factor that, and we know that um, we want two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to 4. Okay, so that's pretty easy. 3 and 1 are both factors of 3. Okay, so using the 3 and the 1, and of course 3 plus 1 is 4. So using the 3 and the 1... We have x plus 3 and x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, we didn't have to use factoring by grouping because there's no coefficient in front of the x squared. So we can just do it the easy way. All right. So again, each of these can equal 0. All right, so we have x plus 3 equals 0. And we have x plus 1 equals 0. All right, in this case, x equals negative 3. Because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And in this case, we have x equals negative 1. All right, so two, two answers so far. x equals negative 3 and negative 1. All right, let me make some more room. All right, and now we want to do this part right here. 
x squared minus 4 equals 0. And you can factor in this case if you like to do that, but really we can just add 4 to both sides. And we have x squared equals positive 4. Okay, taking the square root of both sides, we have x equals plus or minus 2. Okay, remember when you take the square root of both sides, you need to do plus minus. All right, because if you plug in negative 2 and square it, it's going to be positive 4, and it would make this equation work. So x is positive 2 and negative 2. All right, so in this case, we want to graph four zeros. All right, let's go to the graph. All right, we're on the x-axis here. x equals negative 3, right there. x equals negative 1, right there. x equals positive 2, right there. And x equals negative 2, right there. Okay, so to sum it up, set the original equation equal to zero and set each part of that equal to zero and use factoring or factoring by grouping in order to solve.